what's up today boys and girls today we're playing with an LS swapped Ranger this is Matt's race truck for dirt off-road 4x4 racing he's actually Dexter's neighbor which uh, we've had Dexter's truck on the channel so Matt's got a 4.8 with uh, some nice plug wires new plugs stainless headers cold air intake we got a fuel pressure gauge here because we always like to check fuel pressure before we tune and what we're doing is we're setting this up so it'll run and work and everything will function for him and he won't have any troubles and then we're gonna put a little bit of a tune on it besides so the first thing we did was we get HP tuners on here and we uh, we get rid of the security which you go to VATS and you set it to none. So that's the easy part. And we went over here to engine and we straightened up the power enrichment. And we set the EQ ratio to uh, 1.15, which most of these LSs that I tuned, if you use a wide band, that's right around the number you want to be. And we set the ramp in rate right up a little bit and the delay down. So as far as timing goes, most of your power is gained right here with this power enrichment because they're just set up horrible from Chev from factory. Like the delay is at 5,000 so it doesn't even fuel till you're at 5,000 RPM. <clears throat> the next thing we do is we go into Spark Advance and I usually just put the uh, high octane table into the low octane table and then I take the high octane table and I sweeten the upper RPM range of it up a little bit four or five more degrees and then when we run it we scan it and make sure there's no spark knock but you never ever get spark knock with just four or five degrees on these and that gives you your bit of power gain that you need there and uh, so then we go in and we get rid of the rev limiter. We do to do fuel cutoff. And we set the rev limiter up quite high on this 7000. And we got the shift points on the transmission juiced up to, I believe, 6500. 6300 to start, but I think we'll be bumping that up even a little bit higher once he tries it out, because this is a pretty light setup. <laughs> Um, what else did we play with? Uh, the fuel pedal, so under torque management. On these older LSs that are cable driven, you can get away with doing this. If it's newer and it's throttled by wire, then this table is a bit more sensitive and you can only make minor adjustments. But on the older stuff, I usually just max that out. And we're going to leave the spark retard set up just in case. I'm not going to reduce these too much because as long as he's got good fuel into it, it should not affect that too badly. And we get rid of some of the codes for the EVAP, so when we scan it, there's not a bunch of foolishness there that you're chasing your tail around. So other than that, we loaded it on. We got a fuel pump wired direct making good fuel pressure happy with that but when you give it a shot it's rising so I guess that's all that counts at the end of the day but this thing uh, this should dance pretty good because this is a very light setup I got a funny feeling compared to last year he's gonna find it's a little bit different of a truck so there was the list of foolishness codes that we deleted and uh, what Matt did was he bought a harness off Amazon. What'd you say it was, 200 bucks, Matt? Yeah. Right around 200 bucks, a uh, complete harness that you just 
plug and play and away you go. Uh, you did say you had uh, you had to switch the injector wiring, didn't you? Yes. Different pigtails for the injectors, so um, depending what you're using, what year of motor and stuff you got, just double check when you order those harnesses that you get what you want. But uh, this thing seems to run pretty sweet. He's uh, got a new air filter on to it. He said he cleaned the injectors before he put it together because neighbor Dexter already learned that mistake. So Matt said I'm not going to do that to myself right off the bat. He was smart. And uh, he's got his fans wired on a switch for now. He said he's probably going to try to find a set of GM ones with the relay and everything and we'll hook it right to the computer and do it properly. But uh, other than that, man, this thing's a pretty clean build. He took his time making a nice, nice dash tray in it and stuff. It's got all the important gauges there. And uh, this thing's going to be quite a weapon. He's going to, what class did you say this is going in again? Sportsman class. So he's going to be putting a box back on it. And he's got a front drive shaft in it, so it will move itself around for now. But the next step is getting the back drive shaft made and that's really pretty well it eh? back drive shaft and this thing's ready to rock and roll so be curious to see once he gets it on the track hopefully it works great and i told him once it's actually together there's a few dirt roads around that maybe we might trailer it and actually get it out and do a test run and make sure that uh the transmission shifting good and everything and where we want it to be shifting when he's when he's giving her the beans so I think it's going to be pretty good the way it is but uh, it's really hard to tune the transmission without driving it and the other thing with this you say you're going to be running it in four low most of the time eh? Yeah. so we're not tuning high range we're trying to tune four low for our shift points and stuff so it'll be interesting